Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're talking about drop-in conversion kits. Now, there's uh, been a segment of the industry, uh, military, law enforcement, commercial, who have been on a kick that uh, external piston is the way to go. Um, some people like to claim that there is a fundamental flaw or the drug gas system is flawed and that this is a better option. Now, all you guys know from the past that I am a direct gas fan. Uh, I believe a properly made direct gas uh, mechanism is is the way to go. Uh, it, it's it's battle proven. It's uh, it's reliable. It's durable, uh, and it has many benefits over the external piston system. But uh, again, we have uh, that segment of society that's out there who does want external pistons. There's a few different ones. Adams Arms, you know, for instance, is one of them as well. Uh, the one that we have here is probably my favorite one, and we're going to get into why. But first, we want to get a little bit of a reasoning why this comes about. What we see here is a standard M16 type uh, direct gas system, or internal piston as I like to refer to it, because the piston chamber is done inside of the bolt carrier group. Now, what a lot of the argument you know stems from is the fact that gas is tapped from the front sight base through the tube, into the carrier and the expansion chamber is made up between the back of the bolt and back of the carrier. And what that does is it increases, you know, there's heat, uh, it causes heat amongst the bolt, bolt carrier group. And also there's debris that comes in with that hot, that hot gas, uh, that, that follows the inside of the, uh, the bolt carrier group. So people claim that the external piston, first off, it keeps everything in the back cool. Um, and it also keeps all the debris up in the front. There has never been what you would call a direct comparison between uh, the direct gas and external piston to say one is better than the other. Now, the way that you, you would determine is you have a specification. Uh, for instance, the M16 uh, is defined as a, a 6,000 round reliability. That's where its durability has to, it has a whole mil, mil spec it has to go through. And it does it, it does it well. You would put an external piston in one, would it do the same thing? It may. The biggest problem comes in is the weapon system itself. This weapon system was not designed for a external piston. It was designed for the internal uh, internal piston, the direct gas. And you can tell that because this was designed as an inline construction, meaning you have the barrel is in line with the bolt carrier group with the with the stock assembly. It was designed for that for that gas to go into the bolt carrier group, for that gas to be evenly distributed around the bolt to give it an, an even push back, so everything would be in line. Well, when you start putting an external piston on here, you're changing that dynamic. You're now putting, you're now having a bolt carrier group where it's being struck on the top by the piston, and you have the center mass of that uh, of that bolt carrier where it tilts back and forward. And what causes it is when you strike it on the top, the, the back end is going to come down, and that causes what we call carrier tilt, uh, which I, I will say straight up that it does it does cause damage. Um, I can remember uh, quite some time ago, uh, I was probably, oh, I would say 2004 or so, I went to Colt, and we were looking at the differences between the M5 and the LE-1020. The team who had worked on the LE-1020 had made some modifications to the rear of the bolt carrier, where you had skis and you had a little conical design, so that, that dealt with the uh, majority of the issues regarding carrier tilt. The gentleman who was working on the M5 he left the bolt carrier rear the same way it was for a direct gas, and uh, he, he didn't really think to, to look at it. And when I looked at the two designs, we opened it up, and we actually saw quite a bit of damage that was done inside of that receiver extension. So it does happen if it's something that you that you fire an excessive amount of rounds out of, and you know, it, you can have that happen. But when you take a gun that was not designed for that system, and you and you and you modify it. You, know, you you will have issues, but between the two the two systems, I, I've been very pleased with the direct gas system. But they answered the call. People who wanted it, uh, Osprey did it. Now, well, first I want to talk to you why I like this one so much. This one comes as a kit. You have the bolt carrier. You have your operating rod assembly. You have basically uh, three pieces: the, the bolt carrier, the operating rod, and then you have the the actual uh, piston. Uh, expansion chamber right here, which is sort of kidney bean shaped. Now, what's nice about this one is you use your existing front sight base. Most of the conversion kits that come through, you basically have to remove your front sight base and install a new one. 
And those are generally installed uh, by by bolts on the side you're using. You know, it, it's not pinned in place. Now, you've heard me say on many occasions why I prefer a pinned on front sight base, especially for a combat rifle. Well, the nice thing about this is when you install this, you're installing it into your standard system that already has a front sight base in here. Now, you're looking at some force that comes back and forth when uh, this is moving back and forth. Having that pinned in place here is going to be additional strength. So that's that's something that I'm actually quite fond of is the fact that uh, this goes directly into your front sight base. Now, when I started working with these, I've had this for quite some time. I probably would say at least you know, at least four or five years. Um, I was trying to do some research for Black Rifle 3, and I wanted to look into I have a whole chapter that I'm planning on doing that's going to have to deal with uh, external pistons. And this is one of the ones that I had looked at. And the first couple that I got, uh, I had issues with. I actually couldn't get the, the piston to fit in the inside of the uh, front sight base to pin it in place. Um, the it seemed like it was oversized. Now this is another issue where you come into play with a lot of manufacturers who make parts. You can't really tell whether they're within spec or without or not in spec. Now with a gas tube, it slid in here perfectly easily. But the first couple uh, pistons I tried I tried installing into here wouldn't fit. They you know Osprey sent me back a new one, uh, and this one here slid right into place. It was and you know pinned it, and you know and it was fine. So that could have just been you know, a quirk of this rifle. You know, the host rifle that we use for this is a it's an Aero Precision upper receiver, uh, which is standard M4 as you can see, and then the lower receiver is uh, is, is BCM. And we've got uh, arms, arms back up sight on here. Now as this comes, it comes with a set of uh, polymer handguards. And what they are is they're cut out in the, in the front to accommodate the, the, the piston itself. Now I did not care for these handguards uh, at all, so I went with a mag, the Magpul Mo, and we're going to see how these go back on. But uh, this ended up being a really, really good solution. Now, a while ago, uh, when this was a lot more popular, uh, I believe it was Midwest Industries made a aluminum uh, rail uh, that, that went over here. It was specifically designed to cover up the Osprey system. Well, the only problem is with that rail is you either had to have uh, rail protectors on it or your vertical pistol grip because granted when you have a, a you know a direct gas system your pressure is coming out of the side here because your pistons back here well here it's all moved up front so when this opens up it's exiting gas up around where your hand is so you'll definitely feel you feel a little puff of air or you can feel a little bit of heat coming out of there well, when you put a aluminum handguard on here this acts as a heat sink because all your heat's up here and you know, it doesn't take too long for that to get to the point where you can't uh, you can't hold it. So the polymer handguards did a better job of protecting your hands than the uh, than the rails that were produced by Midwest Industry because that was a it was a heat conductor. Now I will say that uh, the Magpul Mode does an incredible job uh, because you do have uh, a heat shield at the bottom. In fact, you can probably see in here where some of the uh, you can see where some of the gas was, but uh, it it worked out very very well. You, know, you did get a little bit popped out here, but it wasn't too bad. Now we're going to take a look at this kit a little bit more in, in depth. Now you're going to see some pictures that show the kit as it came and all the components. We're not going to take this thing apart because in order to do that, I have to knock this, this pin out, which I don't want to do. Uh, and this is all, all assembled, so we're not really going to do that. There were two versions of this. Um, what you see here is covered in Fail Zero, or it's one of the nickel boron wonder finishes, uh, which they claim to be lube free or it's uh, it, it doesn't need lubrication which uh, i don't buy i never have uh, anytime you have two pieces of metal colliding against each other you need to have some kind of a lubricant i get to see any wonder finish that, that totally eliminates the need for a lubricant this one here is the fail zero this also comes in a parkerized finish and from, from what i'm seeing right now uh, you know this kit is available through brownells and you know the price is around 2.99 uh, for the one at brownells and that's the parkerized one Looking on the net, I haven't really seen any availability of the uh, the Fail Zero coated one any longer. So I don't know whether it's not made any longer or what, but everything that I'm seeing has the uh, the Parkerized finish. Now this kit does come in three different sizes. What you see here is a standard uh, carbine length. You will have a mid length, and you'll also have a 20 inch uh, standard rifle length uh, system as well. Uh, my experience has strictly been with the with the carbine length. Now the manufacturer of this makes a lot of interesting claims. Uh, in fact, I think that was like 13 times more reliable or something. They were saying that the this was over the direct gas, which I think is definitely marketing. There's, there's absolutely no question because, uh, 
you know, as well as this thing works, that receiver will work just as good. Um, and it's regular routine maintenance. Now, a lot of the issues that people claim is an improvement, you know, I guess I'm, I guess I'm going to show my bias here that I prefer direct gas. Now, so far as heat's concerned, I can remember when HK first came out with their 416, they would go fire 100 rounds. They would pull out their, the bolt carrier to show how cool the bolt was, and, you know, you could hold it in your hand, which, you know, I guess I, I, I would say, so what? Because even though there's heat back here, all that you would worry about was it was enough heat that would cause a effect on the springs and everything that's inside of the bolt that would cause it to fail. The reality is, is the temper, the temper on those springs and the heat treating on those springs, this thing would never get hot enough to cause a failure of an extractor spring or an injector spring or anything along those lines. So I sort of see the heat as a, as, as a mute point. Uh, for as far as it being cleaner, yes, there, it is cleaner, but you still have fouling that's going to come through the barrel into the back, especially if you're, you're suppressed. So you're still going to get that fouling that's going to be into the chamber. Uh, it's still going to be there. It's not going to be as bad inside of the carrier, obviously, uh, but, but it does do that. Now, the, where the benefits really do come uh, with a piston is the fact that uh, if this was a shorter barrel, uh, it would definitely give you a better, uh, it would be a little bit better than a direct gas because you would have an increase uh, in your in your dwell time. Now, it's one of the differences between this and many other piston systems is this kidney shape you see here, which more evenly distributes the gas, and it gives you a, a lower, for the most part, a much lower uh or gives you a better dwell time uh, than you would with it with most of the standard piston guns. So we're going to take a look at some of the inside here at the carrier itself. As we discussed, Nibex coating. So you'll see that uh, obviously you don't have a carrier key on here. You'll see that we have an impact surface, which is where the, the bolt strikes. Uh, I have a JP Enterprises bolt that I placed in here. Now the kit came with uh, just a carrier, so you had to put all your guts into it. So I got a POF roller cam in here. Uh, I've definitely found with the external piston guns, because uh, you do have the damage that happens in, inside of the receiver right behind the, the cam pin uh, slot. Uh, I do find that the roller cam does a better job at preventing a lot of that damage. Uh, that particular damage is normally found with external piston guns because of the way that it, uh, the bolt opens. When you're using an external piston type of a mechanism, it requires generally more gas to go in there to make it operate. So it's a much more violent opening action. Uh, which is the bolt carrier moves rearward, the carrier, the cam pin will cut into the receiver. I think the, this roller cam does a good job of providing a lot of that. And as you can see, we have a, a conical shape to this, a little bit of a comb to deal with the issue regarding uh, carrier tilt. This again, carrier tilt, normally with an M16, it's all directly in line. Uh, as the gas comes in here, it fills up, evenly distributes it, pushes the bolt carrier straight back. This here, at your center point, it strikes here. Well, obviously, if it strikes here, it's going to tilt down a little bit, and this area would scrape in the inside of the receiver extension. Now, I've had, I don't know, maybe 500 or so rounds through this thing, and I have no marks in my receiver extension at all. Um, this does make a little bit of a difference, but that's just one of the things that you're going to, uh, you're going to deal with when it comes to uh, using external piston in this platform. Uh, I also use an H2 buffer. Uh, the H2 buffer gives a little bit more weight on there uh, to help with that opening stroke, uh, which makes it a little less violent. Um, most you'll see most manufacturers who have external piston guns in an AR platform will use an H2 buffer. But again, we have the uh, finish here, which is the fail zero. Now, as you can see, when we operate this thing, uh, and you will see in the in the videos, uh, we have some very good high speed videos to show you uh, for as far as showing how the mechanism works. As the gas goes up, it pushes the operating rod rearward. And you can see how that opens up. As that opens up, it strikes the top of the carrier, driving it rearward. There's no return spring on here, so as the bolt carrier moves forward, it closes your system back up again. So again, in the, in the videos you're going to see, in the shooting section, you're going to see uh, slow motion, which is going to show how this is going to operate. Now... I, you know, I, I, I can't give you any complaints about the function of this thing. This has been 100%. Uh, we've had it in, in Arctic New York cold weather. Uh, we've had it in hot Texas weather. Um, you know, we, we've, we've had no issues with it whatsoever. It is definitely still available through Brownells. Um, their price is $2.99. Uh, 
uh, which is not, it's not a bad price if you would consider what it would cost to, to buy a new gun. Uh, this, this external piston. And the thing is, it's nice about this is you maintain all of your AR components. Everything stays the same. Disassembly, reassembly, your total manual or manual of arms, um, your maintenance, uh, which contrary to popular belief, even though this is an external piston, you still have to clean this thing. Uh, especially when you fire them suppressed. When you fire them suppressed, you get all that gas blowing back into here, which, you know, by the time you pull this thing out, you'll think it was a, it was a direct gas gun because of all the following that you're going to see on it. As I said, we're going to show you the pic, the you know, photographs that show the uh, this is something because again, I'm not going to disassemble this due to, you know, knocking the pins out and, and, and whatnot. So, so for as far as making that decision uh, whether you want an external piston or not, you know, that's that depends on what your beliefs are. You know, there uh, there are those out there who say this is the only way to go. Uh, to be quite honest with you, my opinion is, is if you're looking for an external piston gun, buy one that was designed as that, such as a SIG MCX, which was designed as an external piston in the ARAC by uh, Faction Firearms, um, even, you know, the XCR, uh, the, a the ACR. Uh, there, there's plenty of guns that were designed as piston guns that will work properly. You know, one of the biggest things that separates the two of them is the bolt carrier is free in here. It, it, it's free floating in here. It's designed to go straight back. If you look at it in the extra, any external piston gun, AK or whatnot, you'll see that the bolt carrier, because it has that uh, the offsetter hit from the for the piston, which would drive a carrier downward. The carrier rides inside of rails to keep everything straight and, and in line, uh, which this does not have. So you want something that's designed that way. The other thing is too is uh, the way the gas systems work them, you know, themselves is a little bit different. Uh, most times the external pistons require a lot more gas. This is a very unique system in the fact that it's using the exact same gas port. Now, according to this company, you can use this for 556, uh, 762 by 39, 545, 300 blackout, 68, um, with, with no issues. I've only tried it in 556. Uh, so, you know, we really can't, I really can't say one way or another. I do want to show you how the Mo work. I sort of found the Mo by mistake. Um, yeah, that, that, that it was going to work for this uh, particular purpose. But it's a much more comfortable handguard. It does not get nearly as hot uh, as the as like the Midwest wood or, or anything else. Now with the Mo handguard in here, it sort of works out really well. You have a heat shield that goes all the way around to the bottom, and then you have a heat shield on the sides here as well. So with your hand being underneath, all your gas is going to be directed upwards. So it's, your your hand's going to stay clean. This has also got M lock on here too, so you'll be able to put your uh, your accessories on here. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take this thing out to the range and we're going to see how it shoots.
Osprey 416 system is definitely an option for somebody who does want to go with a, with a external piston and an easy conversion uh, because it is a very easy conversion. It goes really quickly and it gives you a good reliable rifle. Uh, I expect this thing is going to serve quite well for quite some time. I don't see any uh, issues with it that's going to cause any problems. Um, I'm going to keep it this way. I'm going to continue to shoot it. I have been shooting it for a few years um, without any issue. Now I have not used any of the Wolf ammunition or anything in the lower, you know, the lower 223. Uh, everything I use is 556, so I haven't really tested this thing with any of the lower powered ammunition. I do have seen some other videos where it shows uh, it being used. As you may or may not know, I only use uh, Wolf ammunition in 5.45 and 7.62 by 39 guns that are designed uh, for that. I stick with regular uh, Black Hills ammunition or Federal XM-183 or such for you know for all the 5.56 ammunition that I that I use. If you take a look down in the notes, you'll see that every part that we have here, uh, you'll see it is available at Brownells for the most part, uh, including the Osprey system. Um, I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.